Hi and welcome to this practice that is all about a pose called Brahmachasana. And that translates to celibate's pose. So I'll just let your imagination run wild with that for a minute of what that might look like. I guarantee you it's probably not what you're thinking. Uh, so Brahmacharya is part of the Yamas and it used to kind of be translated as celibacy but we now use it as the right use of energy. So it's that idea that you know, as human beings, we tend towards excess. And so can we maybe find that middle ground, maybe find that kind of Goldilocks zone? Particularly within this practice, can you find that for yourself? So not over-efforting, not collapsing, but just that kind of right amount, right use of energy. It's also translated as the pathway to God or the pathway to consciousness or the pathway to the divine. And so within this practice, we're going to use so hum, a little mantra that is that reminder of that. It means I am that, that I am, or the universe is within me, I am the universe. So find yourself a comfortable seat. Make sure you have a strap and tie a loop in it and have that loop relatively big. And you can put that to one side. You might like to sit on a block to begin with, or you can just sit on the floor. And bring your hands onto your side ribs. You can do a little bit of lateral rib breathing to begin with. You can soften your gaze or close your eyes. And start to feel your ribs expand into your hands. And as you exhale, feel the ribs soften in. And breathing in to your hands, rib cage expands. And as you exhale, the ribs soften in. And add the mantra, so visualize that all around you is love, abundance, joy. And as you breathe in, draw that in from the crown of the head as you repeat to yourself, so, bringing that all the way into the heart space. And then as you say, hum, imagine it expanding all through the heart space. So, as you inhale, expanding, drawing that energy in. And exhale, hum, all of that joy, love, abundance spreading throughout the heart. Inhale, so. Exhale, hum. And then bring one hand to the xiphoid process or the bottom of your sternum and the other hand up your back just where it feels comfortable and now breathe into the hand that's on your back as you breathe in so and as you breathe out hum and as you breathe into that hand that's resting on your back you might notice a gent gentle undulation of the spine a little rounding of the spine and then an extension of the spine as you say to yourself, hum. And just keep going with this action. Rounding, so. Extension, hum. And you could stay with your hands in this position, or you could bring your hands onto your knees to make that movement a little bit bigger. So more of a cat-cow. This time think of the crown of the head tailbone coming towards each other. So. And then moving away from one another. Hum. So. As they move towards each other. Hum. As they move away. Just a few more rounds. Really think of this curve of the spine coming from the tailbone, the crown of the head. Those two points trying to meet one another. And again, finding that right amount of energy here. Okay, let's do one more. And then bring the feet onto the floor out in front of you and grab one of your blocks. Reach the block out in front of you and then push the block away from you so you feel your shoulder blades spread wide on the back. Start to C-curve the spine. So think 
tailbone crown of the head towards each other. Come to the bottom of the sacrum, so kind of the pointy bit, just past your, yeah, just about here. <laughs> the best way I can describe it. Good, rock over to the right. And then rock all the way over to the left. Come back to the midline and sit on up. Push the block forward, spread your shoulder blades wide. C, curve the body again, then crown of the head, tailbone towards one another. This time come down to about the middle of your sacrum. Rock over to the right. Rock over to the left. Keep that C curve in the body. Come back to the midline. Insert on up. Push the block forward. C curve the spine. Tailbone. Think of it coming towards the crown of the head. Come down to the back of your sacrum now. Rock to the right. Rock to the left. Come back to the midline. And rise on up. One more time, reach it forward, round, C curve the spine, tailbone crown of the head towards each other. This time come down until your lower back is on the floor. Over to the right, go over to the left, come to the midline and relax down onto your back. Take a moment just to observe the body. Then bring your toes to point towards the sky, press down through your left leg, and draw your right knee in towards your chest. Open the knee out to the side without that left leg moving and that left hip staying really heavy on the floor. Push the heel all the way forward, hover the leg just beside your left leg, back of your rib cage stays down. Turn the toes all the way in and then draw the knee up and over to your left shoulder. Open the knee out to the side. Push the heel forward, back of the rib cage stays down. Toes turn all the way in and then draw the knee over to your left shoulder. Again, open out to the side. Push the heel forward. Toes turn in and bring the knee up and over. This time interlace the fingers around the knee or you could reach up and grab the big toe or the outside of the foot with your right hand. Pull the knee towards your outer armpit for half happy baby pose. Press up through the heel as you pull the knee down. And you might reacquaint with that mantra, so as you inhale, hum as you exhale. Be a really great way of just stilling the mind. I'd release the leg, let it rest by your other leg. And notice the sides of the body and anything that feels different. Then point the toes towards the sky, press your right leg into the floor and draw your left knee in towards your chest. Open the knee out to the side, keep that right hip really heavy, push the heel all the way forward, hover it just beside your right leg. Toes turn all the way in, back of the rib cage stays down and draw the knee over to your right shoulder. Open the knee out to the side. Push the heel forward. Toes turn all the way in and then bring the knee over to your right shoulder. Open the knee out. Push the heel forward. Toes turn in and bring it across. This time you can interlace the fingers around the knee or reach up, catch the big toe or the outside of the foot and bring the knee towards your outer armpit. Half happy baby. Press the heel away as you pull the knee down. So you've got these two opposing forces. And then release the leg down, give it a little shake out. Hug your knees in and take a little rock and roll. Bring yourself up and over and into a tabletop position. Grab your blocks at this point and place your blocks on the floor, shoulder distance apart. There should be a bit of a space in between your blocks. And then reacquaint with the crown of the head, the tailbone. Try and bring those two points towards each other as you round your spine, cat. Then bring those two points away from one another, one another as you extend your spine, cow. Tailbone, crown of the head come towards each other. And then they move away from one another. 
And just keep oscillating between these two shapes and really thinking about the tailbone crown of the head connection and just notice how that changes your experience of cat and cow. And also notice as you bring the tailbone crown of the head towards each other, what you have to do with your arms, your hands, your shoulder blades. And then find your way to a neutral spine. Kick your right heel towards your butt and kick your knee towards the sky. Then begin to draw big circles with your right knee. And as you draw these big circles, check that your left hip is staying directly over your left knee. And check that your lower back is not doing the work. So you're really isolating to this right hip. And open the knee out to the side. Think tailbone crown of the head towards each other again. Find that C curve. Bring the knee towards your outer right armpit and step outside your hand. As you breathe in, mount your hips down, lift your chest towards the sky. As you breathe out, send your sitting bones back and up, toes point to the sky. Breath in, come forward, lift your chest. Breath out, send the sitting bones back, toes to the sky. One more, find that right use of energy here. Not too much effort. Just that right amount of ease, toes to the sky. Then think of tailbone, crown of the head coming towards each other. So you C curve the body again. Bring that right hand either onto the left block or to the floor and try and lift your right leg up and over the block. Now it might not lift up and over the block, you might just be kind of up and down on the side of the block, you might maybe hit the block, but just see what you can do in terms of getting this right leg away from the floor. So we're finding active hip flexion, and really contracting at that shortest range. So it can be quite challenging. Good, once it's on the outside again, plant your hands, tuck your left toes and step back into plank position. Keep this plank position, but bring tailbone crown of the head towards each other. So you C curve the body again. Push with your hands, notice the shoulder blades. Now think stern and forward, sitting bones to the sky, as you uh, find that cow-like shape press out through the heels. Careful not to drop the hips down, so we're keeping the hips up. Tailbone crown of the head towards each other. Push with your hands, spread the shoulder blades wide. Then sternum draws forward, sitting bones to the sky, finding cow. One more time, tailbone crown of the head towards each other. And then extend. And then drop your knees to the floor. Kick your left heel to your butt, kick your knee to the sky and bring circles with that left knee now. Right hip is gonna stay directly over your right knee. And try not to bring this movement into the lower back. And then open the knee out to the side. Think tailbone crown of the head towards each other. Let that bring your knee closer to your outer armpit and step outside your hand. As you breathe in, mount your hips down, lift your chest. As you breathe out, send your sitting bones back and up, toes towards the face. Breath in, mount the hips down, lift your chest. Breath out, sitting bones move back and up, toes to your face. One more time, breath in, hips down. Breath out, send the sitting bones back. Now again, tailbone, crown of the head, bring it towards one another. Move that left hand out of the way and then try and lift this left leg up and over your block. And really trying to activate those muscles in the front of the hip to find this lift off. And don't worry if it doesn't lift up and over, you might just be kind of cramping in the leg and trying to lift up, that's totally fine as well. Good, do one more, land on the outside. This time, step to Malasana. So both feet come to the outsides of your mat, slide your blocks forward, and then bring the elbows to the insides of the knees. The knees are gonna press into the elbows. And if Malasana is easy, just lift up a little bit higher. Find a little bit more work through your groin, your hips. Then inhale, push the earth away, rise on up, reach for the sky. 
And exhale, draw the earth towards you as you lower back down, Malasana. Push the earth away, inhale, rise on up. Exhale, pull the earth towards you, Malasana. Inhale, push it away. Exhale, draw it towards you. Rise on up, and this time toe heel your feet in towards each other and bring the hands down into front of the chest, Samasitihi. Squeeze your right buttock in, pull the weight to that right leg, left knee to chest, and then push the hand to the thigh, the thigh to the hand. So you're gonna ignite the hip flexors in the front of the hip. You'll also feel your core is a little bit active as well. Really press down into your standing leg. Now interlace the fingers around a knee and draw it in a little tighter towards your outer armpit. So turning it into a, a passive range hold. Now see if you can engage those muscles in the front of the hip, keep the leg where it is and let go. Active range hold. Step the foot back, lower the knee to the earth. Cactus your arms, lean your torso back, squeeze the shoulder blades towards each other. Then straighten out the front leg, think tailbone crown of the head towards each other as you round your spine. Inhale, cactus, open. Exhale, round the spine as you straighten the leg, think shoulder blades moving away from one another. One more time, inhale as you cactus. Exhale as you round. Bring your left hand to the floor or to your block and circle your right arm to the sky. Then again, see if you can C curve the body, think crown of the head, tailbone towards each other. Then move them away from one another. Tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Then move them away. One more time, move them towards each other, pause, push into that left hand, see if you can again kick this right leg away from the floor. Nice, shift the weight forward, plant your hand, step back, plank position. Press down through the hands, press down through the feet and pull your hands back. Feel like you're pressing into the outer three fingers as you slowly lower to your belly. Once you're all the way down, arms come alongside the body. Press the pubic bone into the earth. Lift your chest, your arms, your feet. Squeeze your legs together, inner thighs towards the sky. See if you can lift the arms a little higher and then point your fingertips down towards the earth. Finding active wrist extension. Release everything to your belly. Hands come back by your rib cage. Press back, downward facing dog. Press the earth away, soften through your knees. Feel the shoulder blades spread wide on the back. Then left leg floats to the sky. Draw the knee to the nose and step it between your hands. Rise up for crescent warrior, arms reach up. Soften into your right leg and then lean back into your right toes. So most of the weight is in that right foot. Tailbone is lengthening towards the front of the mat. Good, bring the weight over your left leg, right knee to chest, and again, press your hands to your thigh, the thigh to the hands. At the same time, press down with your left leg and squeeze your left buttock in. Bring the hands to the knee and squeeze the knee in towards your chest now. And you may need to open it out slightly to the side to bypass any compression you might feel. Keep the leg where it is and let go. Active range hold. Step your right foot back, lower the knee to the earth. Cactus your arms as you lift your chest. Straighten out the front leg round your spine, think tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Bend your knee, cactus, open. Straighten and round your spine. One more time, cactus and open. Round your spine. Right hand finds the floor, left arm circles to the sky for your baby, Revolve Trikonasana. 
And then again, see if you can bring tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Move them away from one another. Move them towards each other. And away. Move them towards each other. Pause. Maybe put a little bit more weight in that right hand. And try and lift this left leg up and down. Good. Shift the weight forward. Frame the foot. Step back. Plank position. Push down through the hands. Push down through the feet. Pull up on the thighs. Slow lower to your belly. Once you're all the way down, press the pelvis to the floor. Squeeze the legs together. Inhale, lift your chest. Lift your feet. Press down and pull back with your hands. Exhale, release everything to your belly. Press back to downward facing dog. Soften through your knees when you get there and push with your hands to extend your spine and also spread the shoulder blades on the back. Right leg floats to the sky. Knee to nose, step it between your hands. Rise on up, crescent warrior, arms reach to the sky. Soften your back leg generously and then lean into that back leg. So most of your weight is going through the left foot. Think tailbone forward. Bring the weight back over the right leg. And then left knee to your chest. Press hands to thigh, thigh to hands again. Now you bring the knee a little closer in. You can either hold the front of the knee or the back of the knee, or this time piece fingers around the big toe and you extend the heel forward. Squeeze your right butt in, press out through the left heel and try and plug that left leg back in. And then again, engage these muscles in the front of the leg, keep the leg where it is and let go. Straight leg hold. Swing the leg through, warrior three. Arms reach back and alongside the body. Try and lift the arms a little higher to awaken the back of the shoulders, the middle of the upper back. Right hip draws back, left hip rolls down. Slow motion, land your toes at the back of the mat. Reach the arms to the sky, crescent warrior. Soften the back leg, cactus your arms, squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Then straighten the front leg, think tailbone crown of the head towards each other as the elbows pull in. Bend the front knee, cactus as you open, lift your chest. Straighten the front leg and round your spine. Bend the front knee, cactus and open. Straighten as you round. Rise on up. This time, spin your back heel to the floor and open to your warrior two stance. Take a moment to get your feet lined up. And press that knee open towards the pinky toe side. Then flip your palms and lift your chest. Rotate the arm bones all the way in. Think of that C-curve tailbone crown of the head coming towards each other. Flip the palms, lift your chest, extension. Roll the arm bones all the way in, C curve the body. One more time. Again, finding that right amount of effort. Noticing when you are overdoing things. Come back to warrior two. Turn the back toes out. This time, Skandasana to the back leg. You're going to hook the elbow to the inside of the knee and press them against each other. So it doesn't have to be your lowest Skandasana. You want to find that place where you can actually activate the adductor muscles, the inner thigh. Come across to the right side Skandasana. Same thing, press elbow and inner thigh against each other. Back to the left side. And then rise on up. 
warrior two. Flip the front palm straight in the front leg, reverse trikonasana. Then right hand is going to come onto the front of the shin bone, left arm to the sky. Try and press the shin bone into your hand. And then in these static positions, this is where you could bring back that mantra, so hum. So as you inhale, hum as you exhale. A reminder to connect to your inner teacher, your inner Atman, that place of divinity within. Look down, bend into the knee, left hand finds the floor, roll to the outer edge of your left foot, right foot either halfway down the mat or stack for Vashistasana side plank. Lift your hips, top hip ro slightly rolled down. And really try and corkscrew this left hand into the floor. Good, right hand finds the floor, high plank. Pull feet to hands, hands to feet. We're going to move it through Chaturanga. If you prefer to do the Cobra variation, then do that. Otherwise, lower halfway down. Rise to your upward facing dog, sliding to the tops of the feet, straightening the arms. And roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Left leg floats to the sky. Draw the knee to the nose. Lower the knee towards the earth, hover it. Draw it back up towards the nose, suck it in tight, and step between your hands. Standing splits, right leg to the sky. Try and kick your left leg towards your face. And again, C curve the body. See if you can maybe look up at that top foot. Press your hands into the floor or into your blocks. That can help with that C curve action as well. Good, and then soften into your standing leg. Draw the right knee all the way through. Press the hands onto the thigh, the thigh onto the hands. Then draw it in a little tighter. Either catch the back of the thigh or piece fingers around the big toe and you extend the heel forward. Plug the thigh bone back into the socket. Pull the pinky toe side of the foot back a little more. Then keep the leg where it is, but let go. Active range hold. Sweep the leg through to warrior three. Toes point down towards the earth. Left hip crease back. Lift your arms up. Find that awareness through the upper back. And you stamp your foot like you're stamping on the wall behind you. Slow motion, land the toes at the back of the mat. Reach the arms to the sky. Cactus, as you lean back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Straighten the leg as you round the spine and come forward. Forearms to touch. Inhale as you cactus, lean back. Exhale as you straighten and round forward. One more time. And cactus. Good. Rise on up. Open out. Warrior two. Take a moment. Adjust your feet if you need to. Press that knee open towards the pinky toe side. Then lift your palms. Open your chest. Roll your arm bones all the way in, round your spine, tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Rotate the arm bones up, extend. Rotate the arm bones all the way in, tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. One more time. Come back to your warrior two stance. Turn the back foot out and come to Skandasana, pressing the elbow to the inside of the thigh. The thigh presses back. Find that activation through the inner thigh, the deep front line. Come across Skandasana to the left. Same thing. Skandasana to the right. 
and then rise on up, warrior two. Reverse triangle, straighten the front leg, reach to the sky. Trikonasana, hand to the front of the shin bone, press the shin bone into the hands. You want to feel again that activation in the front of the hip. So we're always trying to find that, I guess, oscillation really between isometric holds, the lift-offs, the more concentric lifts. We're starting to really awaken our hip flexors as we move towards our peak pose. Good, look down at the floor, bend into the knee, right hand finds the floor, roll onto the outer edge of the foot, left foot either halfway down or you stack your feet, Vashisthasana. Can you lift that bottom hip a little higher now and imagine you are spinning your right hand out. Good, hand to the floor, high plank. Move it through your flow. What do you need in this moment? What is your right use of energy? Right leg to the sky, inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. Lower and hover the knee. Suck it back up and step between your hands. Standing splits, left leg goes to the sky. Try and C curve the body again, tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Maybe you're looking up at that top leg. Can you squeeze that top buttock a little more to lift the leg a little higher maybe? And then soften into your standing leg. Draw the left leg all the way through. This time don't hang on to it. Pull it in towards your chest as tightly as you can. Extend the heel forward, straight leg balance. Swing the leg through, warrior three. So you're gonna move through that flow just a little quicker. Slow motion, land the toes at the back of the mat. Reach the arms to the sky, inhale. Cactus the arms, lean it back. Straighten out the front leg as you round your spine. Elbows come to touch. One more, bend and open. Straighten as you round. Rise on up, bend the front knee, spin the back heel, warrior two. Flip the palms, extend your spine towards the sky. Roll the arm bones all the way in, C curve the body, tailbone to crown of the head. One more time, lift up and lengthen. Roll the arm bones in, C curve. Come back to your warrior two. Skandasana to the back, maybe you go a little deeper this time. Skandasana to the front. Skandasana to the back. Rise up, warrior two. Inhale, reverse triangle, reach to the sky. Exhale, triangle, hand to the shin bone. Breath in. Exhale, hand to the floor, roll to the outside of the foot. Right foot either halfway down or you stack or you step behind and roll it to wild thing. Roll back into your high plank and take your flow. Remembering right use of energy. What do you need in this moment? Left leg to the sky. Knee to nose, lower and hover the knee. And then suck it back up and step between your hands. Right leg to the sky, standing splints. Find that C curve of the body again. Tailbone, crown of the head coming towards each other. Can you squeeze the right buttock to lift the leg? Soften into your standing leg, right knee comes all the way through. 
knee to chest. Extend the heel forward, straight leg balance. Pendulum the leg through, warrior three. Slow motion, land the toes back of the mat, reach up. Cactus as you lean into the space behind you. Straighten out the legs as you fold forward round your spine. One more, be in the knee, cactus, open. Round it forward, straighten the leg. Rise on up, warrior two this time. Flip the palms, lift your chest. Roll the arm bones all the way in, C curve the body. One more of those, lift and open, roll the arm bones up. Roll the arm bones all the way in. Come back to warrior two. Skandasana to the back. Skandasana to the front. Skandasana to the back. Rise up warrior two. Reverse triangle. The exhale to triangle. Stay for the breath in. Release the right hand to the floor. Roll to the outside of the right foot. Left foot halfway down or you stack or you step behind. Roll the pelvis to the sky wild thing. So making that choice based on what you need in this moment. What is the right use of your energy in this moment? Roll it back, high plank, and move through your flow. Right leg to the sky. Knee to nose, step, oh, don't step it in between your hands, hover it away from the floor. Suck it back up and then step it between your hands. Left leg goes to the sky. C curve the spine, tailbone, crown of the head towards each other. Lift that top leg a little higher. And then release. Uttanasana, give your legs a good shake out. Toe heel your feet a little wider and bend your knees, sit back into malasana. Does it feel any different this time around? Now you might choose to just sit on a block at this point. You might choose to just stay here and maybe play with flexion and extension. Or you could plant your hands to the floor and have a little go at Bakasana crow pose. So you'll bring your knees high up into your upper arms. Think of that tailbone crown of the head connection again. Rock the weight forward into your fingertips and then pick up the feet. Keep thinking of tailbone coming towards the face. Good, and then feet to the floor. Lower your hips to the floor. Extend the legs out and grab your strap. So this is where you wanna have a, a loop that you can pull on. So put your strap on and then bring it around your feet. Now, you wanna have the buckle somewhere where you can play with the length of it. Bring your blocks close by and bring the strap into your kind of mid upper back. Then rock back off your sitting bones and play with extending your legs out into the strap. So you're finding Navasana with the strap. So it should feel kind of nice actually. So just have a little play. It might take you a little bit to find the right length. Make sure that the strap isn't coming too high. So you ideally want it, it's a little bit lower than what I have, about there. So if you think about whoop, <laughs> that where your um, top often, the bottom of your top or your bra strap, kind of that mid upper back, so not right underneath your armpits. Now really press your feet into the strap so you're finding that really good connection. Now, Brahmachasana is a little L-sit hold. So from this shape, think of this C-curve, tailbone, crown of the head coming towards each other. 
Place your hands on your blocks. Now, as your feet come down, think of a seesaw action. You're gonna to have to negotiate the weight. The hips need to go back in space as the feet come down. So as I start to feel my feet come down, I'm gonna push into the block, send my hips back, and that's what gives me the lift into my L sit. And I'm still pressing out into the strap. You can rock back down, come back into Navasana, maybe try that again. So as the legs come down, you're thinking hips back in space. Or actually that can be a good way to set it up if you put your blocks already forward in front of you. So that as you're coming forward, you're gonna be leaning into the blocks to lift up. Or if you wanna come from the bottom, put your feet or your legs on the floor, find that C curve again with the body, plant your hands onto the blocks and push. So you might just play with this a little more with your strap on. That might be the right use of your energy. If you wanna have a play without the strap, bring your strap to one side. This time bring your hips in front of your blocks and place your feet on the floor. Press down and raise your hips to the sky. So reverse tabletop. Now C curve the body, start to send your hips back in space. Keep pressing into your blocks as your hips go back behind you and then see if you can lift maybe one leg or maybe both legs up. Come forward, reverse tabletop, lift up. Send your hips back, find that C curve action. Keep pushing into the blocks, hover the legs. One more time, send it forward. Hips go back, C curve the body, hover the legs. Good, <laughs> give it a shake out. Tuck your left leg in and then you might need a block underneath the pelvis, so feel free to take that. Walk your hands back and puff up your chest. That might be where you stay or you could come down onto your forearms, then readjust your pelvis so the tailbone lengthens forward and press your knee towards the earth. I like to press my toes into the ground as well. So yeah, it's a big pose. It requires actually quite a lot of energy, but it's about the right use. So finding the right engagements in the right parts of the body so that we're not just kind of over efforting to get our way in and actually when you do find that right amount of effort the right use of energy the pose does become a little easier so very carefully press your way up Take this leg and open it to the side. If that's uncomfortable for your leg, you can bring it into that Janushashasana position. Otherwise, keeping that half saddle, coming into a gate pose. Take your right hand to the knee and then take the left arm up and over. Try and stay open with your chest as you reach for the foot. Toes point towards the face. And you can slide the hand anywhere along that leg it's quite nice, this kind of contralateral. We cross the center line and then we get a different part of the brain active. So really good for brain integration and getting the messages across from right and left side brain. And rise on up, swing that leg back out, give it a little shake out, and then we'll do the other side. So right leg is gonna tuck in. Maybe you need that block underneath the hips just to take the pressure off the knee or the ankle. You can also lie down and do this as a quad stretch if you prefer as well. 
walk back onto your hands or maybe come down onto your elbows. Think tailbone lengthening towards the top of the mat, knee pressing down, toes pressing down. And walk your hands back in. Open your knee out to the side this time. And you're going to bring your left hand onto the thigh. Spiral a little to the right. Uh, yeah, the right. And then reach up and over for that left leg. Toes pointing towards the ceiling. Try to keep the arm behind you rather than in front of you. So you're staying open through the chest. And then rise on up, unwind the leg, reach it forward, grab one of your blocks, reach it out in front of you and then think of that C curve again with the spine, tailbone, crown of the head towards each other as you slowly roll down onto your back. And once you get onto your back, bend your knees, place your feet on the floor Slide the block underneath your pelvis on the lowest setting. You could keep your feet like this or bring the soles of your feet together, knees out wide so you've got butterfly position. Then come back to that so hum. Visualize crown of the head into the heart space and then hum as you expand the heart space. So as you draw in love, Abundance, joy, hum as you expand it around the heart space. Complete one more round. And then bring the soles of your feet back onto the ground. Slide that block out from underneath. And you might like to just hug the knees in before you transition into your final resting position, your Shavasana. Allowing the whole body to rest. Remembering that it's during this rest that the integration happens. It's that reminder that I am the universe, the universe is me. I am divinity. You are divinity. A reminder of that place inside you that is unchanging, that is always there and has always been there. And it's that source of love, of joy. That 
place that you can tap back into whenever you need to. And this yoga practice is really just about connecting with that space. Sometimes we have to pause the doing to allow ourselves that opportunity to get back into being, into being in this space. Allow yourself to rest here as long as you need to. Aroha atu, aroha mai. Thank you so much for practicing with me.